Hi, I'm Matthew from LimeSquare, and today I'm going to guide you through the process of enhancing an image in Photoshop. If you have an online store selling products, the thing that customers want to see is how the product looks, and it's important to have high quality, professional looking photos in your store. However, if you're a small business or are just starting out, it can be quite expensive to hire a professional photographer to take the photos. Thankfully, you can use consumer grade cameras to take the shots yourself and with a little know-how, touch them up in Photoshop to give you those professional looking results. Let's begin the tutorial. So we'll start by finding the image we want to open, which is this one here. And you can see from this little preview that the image is quite good to start with. It's done on a nice plain background and the image has plenty of lighting so all the shadows and highlights stand out. So what we want to do is we'll open this up in Photoshop. Now I'm working on a Mac but the same steps will apply on a Windows machine. And also the tools that I'm using in Photoshop are very basic, so it shouldn't really matter which version you're using. Okay, so as you see, we've opened the image in Photoshop. Now I'm just gonna zoom out a bit. I'm going to do this by holding either the Option key on a Mac or Control on Windows and using the scroll wheel to scroll out a bit. Now the first step is to rotate the image, make it upright. So we go image, image rotation, and we want to go 90 degrees counterclockwise. Next, let's just use some of the automatic tools. We'll go image, auto contrast. And there we go. We can see that the background is differentiated a lot more. This will make it easier to select it. Now we need to change the layer, which you can currently see down in the bottom right is a background layer. We want to make that editable. So I'm going to click on the layer, drag it down onto this new layer button, and let go. Now I've made a copy of the background. I'll grab this old background layer and just drag it onto the bin. We'll get rid of that. There we go. Next, we'll grab the magic wand tool. It's over on the left in the toolbar, magic wand. I've set the tolerance to 20, turned anti-aliasing on, and I want it to be contiguous. Um, sample all layers doesn't matter in this case because we only have one layer. So once we've got that set, we're going to start selecting the background. We'll do that by, first I'll click, then I'm going to hold shift, this is the same on Mac and Windows, and select all these background areas. So we can see that we need to go in the center here, grab that bit, get all these missing ones down the bottom. Now we start zoomed out so we can get the bulk of it. Don't worry about these corners, we'll grab them later. I'll zoom in by holding Option or Control and the mouse wheel again. So, yep, we see we've missed this bit here. I'll grab that. And the aim is that we want to get as close to the product itself as possible and including the shadows because the shadows actually once we've removed the background don't look very nice. So we'll go right in. Okay now here is a shadow that's why it's not getting selected. We want to click in and in this case I'd prefer to cut a little bit of the product out rather than keep the shadow because they do look quite nasty once you remove the background. There we go. We don't have to be too fussy. Just get the majority of it correct. Just go once around the edge, making sure I haven't missed anything major. Yep, I'm quite happy with that. Next, what I'm going to do is change over to the Rectangle Marquee tool over here and just scroll up and, in fact, I'll zoom out, just make it a little bit easier. Oops, too far. And I just want to make sure I select everything on the edges. I'm still holding Shift down. You can see the cursor change to that little plus. So Shift and select all the edges and the corners because otherwise we tend to miss some pixels in the selection. Beautiful. Now we're ready to remove the background. We're going to go to the edit menu and clear. 
There we go, the background's removed. But we can't really tell how good the edges are until we put in a white background. So what we're going to do is go down here, click on the new layer button, drag it to the bottom. I'm going to do Command D on a Mac, but Control D on a Windows to deselect. There we go. We'll go up to the edit menu, fill. We want to choose the contents to be filled as white, blending mode normal and 100% opacity, and click OK. There we are. It's not too bad. Click on the background copy layer again. We'll just, there's a few points like over here, the edges are a little bit rough, and here. This little bit of the product that's hanging out down the bottom is probably real, but it doesn't look quite good, so we'll fix that up. Um, we're going to click on the eraser tool on the left hand side. We want to select a very small brush, but something with a soft hardness. So we'll make it about three or four pixels and change the hardness to about 30%. So the way that I begin these touch ups is I look at the image zoomed out, I find parts that catch my eye and then I zoom in on those. Anything else that's too small to see from zoomed out isn't really worth fixing. So let's start on this inside edge here. Zoom in here and I just want to make it nice and smooth. Now this eraser being small with a soft hardness is pretty forgiving. So you just go roughly near the edge, letting go, every now and then, there we go, a lot smoother, let's move down. This other side's pretty rough so we'll just smooth that out. This bit as well. This is a good chance to delete any of those shadows that you accidentally left in. Make that one there. Smooth off that edge. You might find parts like this section which weren't completely selected and removed. So you've got these um, kind of dark lines that are still left in. Just get rid of those and we'll remove this part of the scarf. And I'm going to zoom out again, check for any more obvious areas. It's quite good. This bit's a little bit bumpy, so we'll just make that smooth. If I accidentally make a mistake, as in that, I can just go edit and step backwards, and I'll just remove that last change we made. We go, got more of these dark sections. The further you zoom in, the easier it is to actually make the smoothing happen. Alright, we've got a shadow left inside this middle bit, so we'll just trim that out. Just nice, slow, smooth strokes. I'm moving around this image by using the scroll function on my mouse. Um, the Mac mouse can scroll left and right as well as up and down. Uh, if I didn't have that, I could use the scroll bars on the left and right here. I think it's looking pretty good. There's nothing that's really standing out. And realistically, the fine little tiny details don't matter. Your customers will be looking at the product in its entirety and certainly not focusing on the edges. All right, now let's go to the image menu, adjustments, and the first step will be shadows and highlights. What we want to do is brighten up some of the darker features first before we start messing with the color of the entire thing. So what we're going to do is play with this shadows slider. You can see when the shadows are in there, it's harder to see some of the detail. So I'll move it up until we like the way it looks. If we go too far, it just makes it, the image look washed out. So we want to find the perfect balance. In this image, I'm liking about 30 or 40%. And click OK. Next, we want to adjust the brightness. So go image, adjustments, brightness slash contrast. And what we want to do is make the blacks and the whites really intense. So we'll adjust the brightness. See, now we've gone too far, it's gone washed out. So what I do is I move it past where I think it should be and then move it back until I feel it's too far the other way. And so just balance it in the middle. So I quite like it there, and the contrast, 
make that go all the way. See, too much red, way too deep. So back it off. Back it off. Bit, bit more. I think that's quite good. Click OK. And lastly, we want to adjust the brightness and the saturation of the colors in the image. We'll go Image Adjustments Hue Saturation. This photo looks pretty good, the colors are quite bright, but in other ones you might find that the colors of the image don't match the way the product looks in real life. So what we do is we'll just adjust the saturation here and just increase it. Now we can go really bright, but it's way too far. So this one I think we just want to add a tiny little bit. Don't overdo it because it'll make your product look fake. But about seven for this case and click OK. There we go. That image looks very, very different to how it did before. I'll bring up the previous one. There we go. Look at that. Nice big improvement. The final steps are just to crop the padding around the edges, make sure the size of the image is correct, and then save it off. Now we just want to flatten this image. So we'll go Layer and Flatten Image. You won't actually be able to see it. It's one below where the screen cuts off, but Flatten Image, click on that. There we go, and you'll see all the layers have combined to form one background layer. Go to Image, Trim. We want to trim based on the top left pixel color, which in this case is white, and we want to trim away each of the edges. Click OK. There we go, it's trimmed the white border around the edges. If you found that didn't work properly, it's probably because there were some pixels that you didn't delete from the background and they weren't completely white. Now that we've trimmed away all that white padding, we actually want to add a little bit back just to make it look nice and be bordered and centered. So we'll go image, canvas size. We want to change from pixels to percent and make the width and height both 110%. And see this anchor point is centered in the middle. That means that when we click OK, it'll expand around the edges. Make sure the canvas extension color is white to match the background. Okay. Now in this case, the image is quite tall compared to its width, and sometimes that will affect the layouts and make them look a little bit funny. So what we actually want to do is go back to image, canvas size, and make the short side approximately two thirds the length of the long side. So in this case, the height is almost 900 pixels, so we want to make the width almost 600 pixels. So 580, looks good. And click OK. And there we go. It's a nice aspect ratio and will fit well in many of the layout designs. The final step is just to save the file. We'll go File, Save As. And I prefer to save as a PNG file. It's a much newer format than a JPEG. It has better compression, better quality and will load much faster and look better in the browsers. Change the file name, add something such as edited. Make sure you're in the right location. I'm in the demo directory which is good. And click save. The PNG options, we just want interlace none. Click OK. And there we are. We'll go back to my folder. We can see that we have the two images. I'll open them up. There we go, that's the new image, and that's the original. It looks much brighter and is certainly more appealing and shows off the product. With a little bit of know-how, you can take your consumer grade photo and make a professional product image for your store, and hopefully increase your sales and make a profit. Congratulations, you've reached the end of today's tutorial. If you have any questions, you can contact me through my website, www.limesquare.com.au. Feel free to suggest ideas for future video tutorials. We really appreciate your feedback and thank you for watching.